Yeah, okay, it's T with Gary V. Sipping in for V. I know patience is the key. Putting out all of my shit for free. This is T with Gary V. Might go make a flip. Take a re- Always ends so abruptly. You know, it always ends so abruptly. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry I'm five minutes late. I uh, just had an executive call. It is April 22nd. I am Gary Vaynerchuk. This is T with Gary V. Dustin on the ones and twos. Let's get it going. Uh, please share the URL on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Tag some friends. Let's get some new friends in the mix. Let's get into the show. Wow. Wow. Hi, Hi. Cool. Hi, are you there? Nice to see you. It's great to see you. This is fun. How are you doing? Yes. I'm really good. How are you doing? I'm really well. Thank you for asking. Good. Family's well. Everybody's hanging in. Yeah, we're in the mountains in Colorado, and I'm natural recluse, so I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. I, uh, my team was trying to keep this a secret, but I saw something, so I knew you were coming, so I'm super excited that you're here. Right on. I, I appreciate it. Likewise. Do you have any questions? Not particularly. Good. You going to play a little music? Yeah. Go oh, ahead. are we on and live? Sorry. We are on and live. <laughs> We are right. on the live. Cool. Yeah, we I've been wrong. just thinking about how are people doing. When I look at this pandemic, I really see it as this threefold thing. I see uh, the virus is obviously one pillar, and then economic fallout, which I don't think we've quite gotten a grip on no. of what that's going to be, and then the mental health fallout. Um, suicides really tend happening. to nearly double during recessions, and that's never been during a pandemic or during isolation. Suicide hotlines are up 300%. I have a youth foundation where all we do is help kids with suicidal ideation. Um, what have you seen in, like, in your comments and in your fans yes, talking about that, their anxiety? That. I think a lot of people are struggling. And so I, I have seen a, a little bit of a silver lining. I've, I've spoken to a couple people who are getting um, help through this kind of interaction through video, which now which they thought, similar to me with meetings, they thought they needed to be in the room with their person, whoever that may be, and they've been able to get the value through this, which makes it feel scalable, which one of one, one fan who I've gotten friendly with you know, now feels that she can travel because she can do it on the laptop versus being in the room. And, and so, I, you know, like everything, there's always the pros and the cons, but yes, there's a lot of anxiousness and I think to your point the the ramifications on the economy post this there's a lot of people out of jobs slash consumer behavior will change forever so yeah. you know if you know what don't we know you know what don't we know uh, that has changed forever in retail in restaurant and tra- I mean y- you can imagine a world that even 24 months from now travel is down 20 to 35 percent you know, or hotels or conferences. Yeah. So there's just a lot. There's a lot. Yeah. My main concern is helping, trying to help people. We're going to come out of this one of two ways. We're going to be more resilient, more capable. We're going to say, these are ideas that no longer serve me, beliefs and systems and functions. That's real. These are ones that are going to replace them because I've used this time to be really thoughtful. Or people are going to become so anxious and so worried, which is understandable. But if we don't understand what to do with worry and anxiety, it's going to escalate into pathologies, and I could foresee a world where many people come out of this more afraid, more scared, more disempowered. They, um, they, they will. They will for a certain period of time in certain ways. You know, I mean, look what look what 9-11 did to a lot of people, completely changed their frameworks, their political views, their, their anxieties. So, yeah, I mean, this is a real world event. This will be, yeah. talk, this will be talked about hundreds of years after we're gone. So this is real stuff. This is real, real, yeah, real for stuff. me, I um with the kids. So I've been working with kids for 18 years, with the youth foundation called Inspiring Children. And I give them a toolkit of mindfulness and motion tools. So mindfulness has two components in my eyes, meditation, which is one. And then you have to create exercise. It's like the gym. If you go to the gym, you build a muscle. That's great. But unless you use that muscle during the day, it's not going to change your life. Meditation is the same way. Meditation actually builds a muscle. They've learned in eight weeks it can grow new folds in your frontal lobes and shrink your amygdala where anxiety lives. But if you don't put that muscle to work, it isn't going to change your life. Um, So the tools that I developed, I actually developed them while I was homeless, but they were recently proven to work by a neuroscientist named Dr. Judson Brewer uh, to help rewire your brain 
thanks to neuroplasticity, which is just a fancy way of saying you start old habits and you build new ones. So the kids and I put the tools up on a free website called jewelneverbroken.com. Jewelneverbroken.com? Yeah, jewelneverbroken.com. And it's free three-minute exercises that actually will help rewire you. And one of the main things I wanted to just, because I know we don't have a ton of time, but I just wanted to kind of put this in people's ears that there's only two basic states of being. There's dilated and then there's contracted. Both are important, but when you do them at the wrong time, it can be really uncomfortable. So joy, gratitude, curiosity, observation helps you dilate, relax. And that's actual neurological, neurotransmitter and vascular. Everything changes. Contraction is anxiety, theory, word, theory, word doubt, anger, yep. etc. And you can't be in two states at once. So the best hack that I ever learned for anxiety for me when I was homeless uh, you know, my car I was living in got stolen. It was awful. I was having panic attacks, agoraphobia. And I learned that if I was heading into a highly anxious state, I could feel my whole body constrict. I just had to profoundly make myself have a thought or a feeling that dilated me. And I always used gratitude. Um, your vascular system dilates, your neurotransmitters change. It's really profound. And no matter how little you have, there is something to be grateful for, uh, so there's an exercise that kind of helps you practice that on the website. Uh, but I wrote a song called Grateful just because I felt like that was the medicine that I'm a fan of that word. helped me. And I know you're big on gratitude. Um, by the way, what you're doing with the All In is incredible. That's Thank amazing. You. It's been Thank so you. awesome. It's been really fun. I think I want to enter all those raffles. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> I know. Right, Maybe step up my game. Like I don't even know what I can offer. That that's cool. There's such cool packages. I'll, I'll hit you up after this. You could do amazing <laughs> things. You can. You could have D1. Can you play? Can you play a little bit of it? And then I'm gonna get to some of the questions before I get off. Yep. Thanks, this is fun. When everything's wrong, when I can't find my song, when darkness is all I see. There is a remedy Cause it's all the little things That make the world go round It's all the little things That are most powerful There's no politician No scout to die No one can take the love from my heart And so I'm gonna shine in this heart of mine, the sun gonna shine. In this heart of mine, the sun gonna show who it's true. Cause I can always be grateful. Too good. Too good. So, <laughs> you are so amazing. Jewel, thank you so much for being on. Let's yeah. throw that website up one more time, Dustin. Jewel, what's the website one more time for everybody? Jewelneverbroken.com. And I just launched the song, Grateful, if people want to check it out. We are going to check it out. Jewel, love you. Take care of yourself. We'll talk Bye. soon. Bye-bye. Man, if I could sing, I'd be on a whole nother level. I was just listening to that. I was like, fuck, man. Anyway, let's keep going. Fun way to start the morning. Gino. Gary. What's good, bro? Good morning, man. How you doing? Good morning. I'm really well. What can I help you with? Uh, just, uh, had a question for you, man. Um, so, so I'm an artist. I was always an artist. Uh, it's kind of how I got into music. Um, uh, but recently I started to songwrite, like to kind of get, break in the industry. Um, and I've had a lot of success, uh, like multi-platinum things are going really well. That's awesome, bro. Um, hey, uh, but recently, I, you know, we decided to kind of kick off the artist thing and go full in on that. Um, I recently dropped a record, um, and so I'm kind of shifting my focus back into, into being an artist, but I don't want to lose the songwriting momentum. So I guess my question is- Both. Both, right? You, you, ha you have it in you. Yeah. Like, like people think about things in theory. Like there's a theory that if you're not all in on one or the other, you can't pull it off. When that makes no fucking sense. Right. Like I'm, I'm running the most successful Fastest, the most, the fastest growing agency in Madison Avenue, which is hardcore shit. It's competitive. I'm competing against multi-billion dollar companies. And I'm building one of the most prolific personal brands. There's so many people that want to be Gary Vee on social media. 
that that's all they do, yet it's the minority of what I do. I, I spend most of my time being an actual executive. Right. And launching Empathy Wines and helping my dad with wine techs. And, you know, like, you got it. You got that in you, Dino. Like, if you wake up in the morning, you feel like you want to write something, boom. If you want to go in the studio and keep that song for you, boom. If you want to give that song to the baby, boom. Like, like there is no fucking rules. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I in, think it's in your head or people around you saying, yo, if you don't go all in on one thing, you're, you're going to have your ass on two toilets and you're not going to be able to pull it off. Yeah, I think a lot of it is like it's not so much a concern that I can't do both because I know I can. I've been, okay. you know, I've been doing it. Um, I think a lot of it is just trying to find the balance of like, because I, you know, I'm doing like six, seven sessions a week on the yeah. on the writing, on the writing tip. Um, so yeah, I don't know. So I guess do, so. Do four. Right. Let's talk about writing. You know, it's one song. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. Bro, you know, it's not seven songs a week. Right. It's right. you write one fucking banger that changes your whole life forever. Right. Right? Facts. Yeah. So I, I think you're judging yourself for no reason. Do whatever it feels right. You want to go three straight weeks on a fucking binge writing tour? Mazel tov. You want to go in the fucking booth for a month? Good. You want to do one day, one day, one day? My biggest issue that I'm trying to change in the world is people judging themselves. Just do what the fuck feels right. Yeah. Do you, let me ask you, do you, do you, okay, so you're running so much shit at once. Do you, are there like periods where you prioritize something like, all right, I got to go in on this today. Like I got to go. Yeah. yeah. Like today I have to do a call with my London office to look at their finances. So tea with Gary B is not nine to 11. It's nine to 10. Right. I prioritize, I prioritized the London office. Yeah. I was five minutes late for this. I prioritized my epic call with the Tracer team, Tracer.tech, if you're looking at some uh, software to help you with your social if you're a big company. So, you know, like, I prioritize every fucking second, but I don't make some master plan and write it on a paper and think this is going to be my next 400 days. Yeah. Everyone had a five-year plan until some lady ate a bat in China and fucked it all up. You're right. Yeah. What happened to your fucking five-year plans now, everybody? What yeah. happened to your fucking five-year plan now? Some lady ate a bat in China and fucked your shit up on some real shit. That would be like a joke that I would make a year ago to talk about don't make five-year plans. Yeah. Yeah, prioritize daily, not yearly, not in the macro, not on a fucking Excel sheet, not on my fucking pad. I live it. Right. I think that's been the, the, the blessing of, if there is that, of this whole thing is like, I've been, if I don't feel like doing it today, if I wake up and I'm like, eh, I'm not inspired. I don't force it. I do something else that, you Bingo. know. It, Give back yeah. to your audience. Right. Yeah, don't force, but don't lay in bed and just dwell on everything. Do don't something. Yeah, don't be a problem. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Word. All right, my Thanks. man. Stay, stay well. Sure. All right. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Gino in the building. I like him. Joel, how are you? Great. How are you doing? I'm quite well. Good. It's great to see you. Yeah, good to see you. I, I enjoyed reading a little bit in your biography about how as a child you became an entrepreneur. I had the same experience. I was 11 when I started my first business. I love that. What were you doing? I was uh, delivering fresh vegetables that I'd grown around the neighborhood. I hired my little brother to take them around the neighborhood in a red radio flyer wagon. <laughs> I love that. I love that. How you been hanging in? Yeah, pretty well, all things considered. I mean, the airline industry is a tough one. I'm in a bunch of other businesses as well, but the airline business is particularly hard hit. Airlines, hotels, cruise ships, I think are the three toughest. I think that's right. I think that's right. What can I help you with? Just eager to talk with you about whatever you want to talk about. You know, I'm, I'm kind of in a place where I think there's an enormous amount of uh, opportunity. You know, I think that right now everyone's got to, kind of settle into their realities. You know, I think they have to cross their T's and dot their I's. Um, but, uh, but for me, all I want to talk about is offense and optimism. I, that's such a great message. I, I think it's going to reshuffle the deck. I think the people that are the most creative, have the most ingenuity, are best grounded in principles. Uh, and and I'm, I've just written this book called The Entrepreneurial Leader, which I think is going to be required of everyone is to be more entrepreneurial. 
Uh, yeah, no I mean, more presiders, no more managers, no more administrators. It's really going to require leaders to be entrepreneurial. And 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 that goes in my mind as creative. You've got to just rethink. You know, the status quo um, uh, is is extremely dangerous when innovation is required, and this this moment requires enormous innovation, rethinking, and most of all, humility. Many are gonna struggle going back into the world and not having the same amount of money, the same amount of status, the same amount of cush opportunity. You know, organizations that go from 800 to 437 are gonna require all 437 to work, where at 800, they have the fat to get away with being in meetings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's exactly right. I think it's going to require a lot of things of, of people. One of the things that I think uh, leaders are going to have to do better is communicate more directly, bad news as well as good news before, during, and after the fact. I actually think it's going to require people to be kinder. I think that's right. Uh, I don't think people don't think about that, but I think there are a lot of people who are vulnerable. And I think a word of kindness, you know, dropping somebody a note, giving them a call, checking up on them, making sure they're okay. Uh, and I think volunteering, I, I've given blood a couple of times, uh, I'm scheduled to give blood another time here. And I think it, you kind of lose yourself in helping others. I think that's a good way to get through these kinds of crises. I think that's right, my friend. I really appreciate you being on. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, have a great, great day, Joe. All right, take care. Right, bye. bye now. Thanks, man. Let's keep it going. What's going on, Gary? How that's you doing? good, Will. I'm doing quite awesome. well. Appreciate you being on. Appreciate you, brother. Um, so I have a bit of a, I have a question specific to to my situation now, but I, I, it makes sense to give you a bit of a backstory. So I'm 38. I'm from Toronto, Canada. I had a just shy of a 10 years run at finance. I built up a career in finance. I guess it fairly well. I I could have swore I was happy, making good money, low stress. Um, and then I, about two years ago, I sort of questioned everything. You know. It was, sort of just hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, what am I doing? What makes me happy? Long story short, I, I um, you know, I, long story short, I decided to quit. Uh, my passion is audio engineering, something I've always wanted to do. Uh, mixing records, working in the studio. So I pulled the trigger, I did it, um, not knowing how it was gonna pan out because I had no preparation. I didn't have any friends in the industry. I had no basis to go on. I was really on my own on this one. And um, like nobody in my circle really understood my situation. It was sort of like everybody. It's the, easiest, I it's the easiest situation to understand. You decided to choose happiness over being content, safe, and having some money. Right. I mean, my wife thought I was crazy at first. My friends thought I was crazy. Um, you, you know weren't what? You weren't happy. Uh, for, Will, obviously. Will, I think it's crazy that 98% of the people that watch this don't do that shit. Mm -hmm. I think so too. I think, the, you, I think you were awake and realized, I was actually, I'm sorry, like, go ahead. I, I could have, I could have swore I was happy. I mean, it, it, it's almost like it, you were cop, you were happy in the conscious, you were, but in the subconscious you weren't. Right. You right. were happy in the practical. It, you were happy in what you have been taught as a 38 year old is winning. You were mm -hmm. happy in the fake. Right. 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 You, you know, you weren't happy. You know, at 34, on a on a on a nap, or or thirty two on driving to work, or thirty seven on during a shower, that that quick thought passed through your head. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jump, for sure. Jumping at thirty eight means that you've been building since twenty eight to that moment. Maybe. Definitely. Maybe. Definitely. I'm telling you, little little moments, not like every day at twenty eight. At twenty eight, you're like, yeah, I got that money, you know. But I promise you, it was chipping away. Mm hmm. For sure. So, so I did it. Um, now, maybe we can get into maybe a strategic play into where I'm at now. Sure. But, but I'm almost more passionate about what I, it's crazy because I'm, I'm passionate about what I'm doing now, but I mean, I, I, it just leads me to wonder how many people are actually in that state that I was in. Everybody. I think I'm, I'm, I'm almost as passionate about helping people maybe realize that, uh, maybe, you know, I, I want to pursue you, my passion. Will, you, ha you, you have a lot of legs to stand on. Right. You did it. Right. You know, one of the reasons I love being a known entrepreneur in this game right now is because I actually did it.
And a lot of the known entrepreneurs are just talking about being entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're making their money selling people on how to make money, not they've ever actually made some. So the fact that you right. had the, the balls to do it and the strength and the inner strength to do it is going to be massively inspirational. I would argue that you need to be careful that you're not going down that path because you think there's more money in it than the audio engineering thing. So you've got to balance that. And you got to ask right. yourself, am I looking to do that because there's dollars in selling people to do that? Or is that actually my passion? Or mm -hmm. is it because the audio engineering thing doesn't have the finances in the first five years that I may have been accustomed to? That's a real next challenge for you in your own dome. For sure. Okay, so maybe I can, maybe we can get into maybe a strategic place to where I'm at now. So basically, when I quit, I didn't know how this was going to pan out. I didn't, like I said, I didn't have any connection in the industry. I've sort of been building myself over the last year to really get honed in on my craft and, and build my chops. Um, I think early on, I started the whole promotion thing. Like I set up a website and it didn't take me very long to figure out like, oh shit, this is an art form. Like this is going to take me a bit of time to, to really, you know, master. And, and I think I'm, I'm sort of getting there. It's been a year and a half now. And, and I think I'm ready to start promoting and start like, I'm building a portfolio. i got some clients now. It's definitely kind of lining up, but I think uh, up until now, I haven't done the whole social media thing just because I didn't want to do it prematurely. Okay. I didn't want to sell something and not deliver. So what's a strategic play? Like, I mean, what, Truth. besides the content, I mean, I don't Truth. even, there's so many well, people that are on the Yeah, but, but that's actually the game. You know, there's a lot of people that are audio engineers too. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that went into the finance industry too. This is not, the supply and demand of content is, is not the issue. The ability to deliver value to somebody on the other side is the issue. Mm -hmm. The way so deliver, I've sort of been hesitant because I, I mean, like I said, it is an art form. It takes, takes a, um, but you could have documented the journey of becoming there. Like you could have been a I huge inspiration. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I don't know how long you've been watching me, but the document over creating is a big thing. I would argue that your journey in that first 18 months of going from zero and quitting to becoming an audio engineer was some of the best content you could have ever put out. You know, expertise audio engineering content could could be more commoditized than being 38 and jumping into, or 36 or whatever the math was, and jumping into your passion. So, you know, there's always opportunities to bring value as a content creator for everybody's watching if they stay in their truth and they play out the snowflake game, which is like, we're all unique. And I think, the you know, what I'm, what I'm the best in the world at is being 100% me. Mm -hmm. And I think you will being 100% you and telling those stories and showing the crappy content versus, you know, the audio work versus the good work. Like, I think there's power in that. And then people mm -hmm. become aware of you and awareness is branding, which leads to buying. We don't buy Coca-Cola or Nike because they sold us. We just know it and we buy it. And then we figure out if we like it. Right, right, right. Okay. No, I appreciate that, Gary. You gotta Thanks put out content, that. bro. Put out the content. Just start you talking. All right, bro. All right, bro. I appreciate it. I Thanks got you, for everything. I'm glad you picked right. that up. I can tell you got you picked that up. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. It's coming in, Kalen. It's not great, but man, who knows? No one knows. Crystal Mays, what's good? Cassandra Bright, thank you for being here. Samantha Waters, love it. Thank you for being here. Let's keep it going. Hey Gary. Hey Karen. Corinne, actually. Corinne. Sorry. Yes. No, you're fine. A um, couple of questions. Bear with me. I'm a little bit nervous. Um, big fan of yours. I listen to you all the time. All Thank the you. time. Thank um, you. I'm actually looking for advice or strategies on getting away from codependency in business. Okay. So I've restarted my life completely about a year ago. I left my first career and I'm chasing my desires now working in a luxury real estate market. Um, and I don't know a lot about real estate. So I joined a team and um, I met some amazing people that were helping guide me through. Um, but I kind of went off on my own, although I don't have that confidence anymore. So I find myself really trying to rely on other people in order to get where I need to be. Um, that's a mistake. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, like, I think what you need to do is realize it's okay that you don't know anything. You're just starting. Right. You know, like you're in the, you need to put this into the learning. You need, you need to make this the learning process, not the dependency process. Like, do you not enjoy the fact that they have leverage on you? Do you not it, enjoy the fact that you have self-doubt? 
Like, you're going to learn self- it. You're yeah, gonna, it's a you, self but, Yeah, but what, are you supposed thing. to fucking know it immediately? No, right. Well, I want to be able to have educated conversation because these are individuals who are not, it's not like buying a brand new home and you have to, you know, explain something. This is a secondary market. So people who are generally looking for luxury are a lot more advanced in their knowledge. Yeah, that. but people buy, be, people buy from people, Corinne. Right, yeah. As somebody who spends a lot of time with, you know, individuals who, um, you know, buy homes in secondary markets, mm-hmm. like, they, they oftentimes know what they want more than what the real estate agent, even after 20, you know what I mean, talking about? Like, like, the real estate agent is really just on a trust game, and do they like that? Mm-hmm. And the education on the data is here are the comps of what the home sold for. Like, it's not like, you know, like people that have, are in affording a second home have oftentimes are in a place where they've made good decisions. They're either made really good decisions, they really know what the fuck they're talking about, or the complete hucksters and they're about to lose everything at some point in the next 10 years and they actually don't give a fuck about anything but looking cool and doing their thing. So right. I would argue with you that secondary home real estate macro DNA is actually even more about people's skills and the things that you need to learn. I mean, I've watched my sister become highly more educated over the last two two years in her real estate journey and she started at zero and was concerned about it. I I think you're making a mountain out of a molehill. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Um, Well, so this kind of leads into my other thing. Um, what you were saying about it's more of a people skill. I've actually had a couple of individuals in the small town reach out to me that want me to do promotional brand ambassador. Um, they've presented some opportunities for that and I'm, I'm fearful to stretch myself too thin because I'm wanting to pursue this luxury market, but then I have a garage who's, who's wanting to get me out there and do some promoting for them to get more business. And then I have- What a does CD that mean promoting? Do you have, because you have, you have a big following or? No, I don't. That's what's wild to me. They, they think I don't you look have the part? Anything. I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah. I'm assuming. I mean, look, that's up to you. That just comes down to are the economics interesting for you right now in the short term. What I would tell you is you need to be careful because you don't want to dilute your brand. And when I hear a CBD company and garage, like, I want to, you know, you need to decide if you want to be model life or if you want to be real estate agent. And by the way, you can do both. Um, it all just depends on do you feel good about the association? Okay. You know, every time you're putting yourself there, like you're associating. And yeah. so you need to be very My image. Yeah. And so yes, your image for sure. You know, number two, um, you need to make sure you believe in the business. What if God forbid the business is bullshit and you know and, and I'm associated with you're associating gets dragged <laughs> yeah. down. Right. Now on the flip side, I never judge people's short term financial needs, right? So mm-hmm. It's always a friction point. Like, is that five thousand bucks more important than the long-term brand association? But because the real estate thing will be patience. Plus, I'm sure you're no dope. You realize that second home buying may be slowing down a little bit here for a little right. while. Yeah, definitely. So definitely. these are all the navigations, but you get to make those decisions. Just go into making those decisions with eyes wide open. So, do you have a suggestion on finding um, appropriate mentors in this situation? Because this is new to me. I came from the medical field where people were telling me, "Do this, do this, do this, and we'll pay you." Now I'm in a position where I kind of get to figure it out myself, <laughs> mentors, <laughs> and I don't know how. Mentor, mentors tend to be bad because the mentors, 85% of the time, give advice that worked for them. Okay. And so, A, be careful of that because mentors like to give the blueprint that they took. Um, And so I think what you need to do is just consume information, but you also just have to make decisions and taste it. I promise you this, no, you know, brand deal with something is going to forever kill your brand. So don't don't let what I said earlier scare you. Mm -hmm. I just want you to be thoughtful because once you go down that rabbit hole, you could be doing 27 deals later and now your brand's diluted Right, and, and and then the friction of transitioning may be a little bit more difficult, or you just might get caught up in the hamster wheel of the quote unquote easier money. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. I don't want to just become another you know promo model for just anything at this point. I, I want understand. to, yeah, I want to have it all laid out, especially but, for my country. But but you can do both, you know, and you can evolve. You know, mm-hmm. J Lo, Tyra Banks, you know. 
They start in one place. J Lo's a, a dancer on In Living Color. Now she's a, a entrepreneurial global icon. Right. Absolutely. So you're young enough to pull it all off. So what I would say is be thoughtful, but okay. don't be fearful. Okay. Got it. Got it. Thank you, Gary. Bye, Gary. All right. Let's keep it going. Vin, what's good? Gary, what's up, man? I'm super well, brother. So um, I'll right jump right there. into it. Um, I'm, a, I'm the kind of person who likes to have like a couple different projects going at once. So I definitely want to ask you about one. And then if you have like 30 seconds at the end for the other one, that would be awesome. If not, right. no worries. Um, quick backstory. It's a little out of left field, but um, I run an online community for people that are on what's called a low oxalate diet. Um, it's not a diet in like the weight loss sense. It's more out of medical necessity. So you would follow it if you had a certain type of kidney stone or kidney issues. Um, some people with Crohn's disease and, and some other GI issues um, and a few other health conditions. Um, so in my Facebook group, I've just been like answering questions and creating resources for people for a couple of years. Um, I do want to start monetizing, but I just I don't want to be a dick about it. Um, I'm trying to like put the pieces to a revenue model together. And I got something for you, Ben. OK. A, your hair is fucking amazing. Thank B, you. Bro. <laughs> B, B, I think it's access. OK. What I mean by that is. You want to sell information. You know that selling information eight out of 10 times is quite douchey online. If you layer access and do what I'm doing with you right now for two hours a week for anybody that buys the program, I think you can amortize out the concern that you're just selling information that they could in theory find, but you curated it for them. Add more value to it. All of a sudden it goes from a $17 book to a $200 a month thing because they're getting eight hours of you doing Q&A with the group. I think access is the layer that makes it much more palpable. Okay. Um, so the thing is, I think that like the, the basics are like, there's a lot of crappy information out there. Um, so like what I'm doing is kind of like sorting through it and like putting all the good stuff together. And then um, I feel like if people wanted to like, if they wanted access, they could get most of the information that they need up front and like access is to you right spending time with you right that's what i'm saying so i think the they would spend like an hour or two with me like one or two sessions maybe and then that would be like enough and then after that what most people want is just recipes so now, i think recipes are findable they can go on google too they're going to drop what? off eventually that's the thing they they can't find any for this diet because um there's nothing out there like there's a little bit out there, but it's very inaccurate and it's all disorganized. Listen, um, listen you're more than welcome to go content only subscription. Those things tend to peter out. Right. Layering, not individual people, bro, two hours a week period for all 800 people that are in the program. Okay. Got it? Yep. I'm not talking about 54 people getting two hours each. I'm talking, give me two hours a week on top of what your plan is where yep. everybody comes into the room and you bring people in like I'm doing here, and I promise you, you'll build a substantially bigger business. Okay, cool. And um, so I started a podcast too, um, right. having a, like um, some scientists come on, people that do research. I'm gonna try and get a couple MDs. Uh, and then I'm also thinking about having chefs on. I already did one with one chef where she like, she brought some of her recipes and then we kind of modified them like to this diet. Um, what do you think about that and like having and like other kinds of people to have on the podcast? Yes. Just keep doing that. Yes. Cool. What's the name of your podcast? People want to know. Uh, it's called Low Oxalate Kitchen. Low Oxalate Kitchen. Yeah. So I just started it. I just recorded the first three episodes. I'm going to upload the first one like this week, probably. ASAP, bro. ASAP. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming. Um, all right. So then uh, one other question, completely unrelated. Um, you remember that coin that Ryan Holiday gave you, the one that yes. says Memento Mori? Yes. So um, I have one of the other ones that he made, uh, okay. the one that says the obstacle is the way. Um, so, but uh, when my girlfriend saw that I had it, uh, it was like sort of during like a little bit of a rough patch she was going through. Um, she's had some, uh, some struggles, been through some shit. Um, so I explained to her what it was and she was like, oh shit, well, like I want one. So, um, but she was, she wanted one with more of like a, like a self-love mindfulness, comforting kind of vibe. Um, and she's a meditation teacher. So she was like, oh, people could probably meditate with it too. So long story short, we ended up making some and I want to start like, um, reaching out to people on Instagram or wherever really like start sending out DMs, but I'm not sure like which people to like to target and like what exactly to say to like to get them to be into it, you know? Target people with something contextual to them, tell them that you admire them and you want to send it to them and recognize one out of every 87 people that DM you will take it. 
And then what if, if I just send it, like, should I like, you know, the ask second, them to post about it or just send it and forget the second, it? The second, the, second, the second you ask them to post about it, you've lost. Right. So just send it and then that's it. All right. And then, so one out of 87 will reply. Yep. One out of every nine will actually post it in their feed. Two out of every nine will post it in their story. And that's your business. Their awareness is worth way more than your fucking coin. Right. Like me posting something in my fucking main feed. My dad fucking picked up 25,000 followers last night. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, you know, that's worth, you know, worth in ad money. If you spent it on Instagram to get the same thing to happen, it's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't want your fucking coin. Yeah. So you have to be, you have to be empathetic. You know, like people are always like, oh, they don't fucking post. I'm like, they don't want your fucking eight dollar tea. They don't want your nine dollar hat. They don't want your fucking coin. But but if you write something contextual and if it hits them, you've got something a little more soulful, you might be able to convert some stuff. And that's one way to market, which is right. influencer marketing for free, or you can offer to pay, or you can run ads. There's a million different things you can do. But you yeah. can't be mad at the fucking influencer to not post it when their value of it is so much greater than the th free fucking thing they gave it. It's like right. that guy yesterday on the show was like, hey, I'm gonna give you two things and then can you give me something? <laughs> hey, did you know the Roman numeral fucking five was V? Yes, I yeah. did. Hey, something other horse shit. And then he's like, now can you record something I can put on the front of my podcast which will help me fucking build my show? Right. That was a fucking joke. I did it because I'm a good dude, but that wasn't like an epic fucking exchange. That was yeah. me fucking doing charity. Right. All right. Cool. cool. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Appreciate Take it. Care, my brother. Yep. Really enjoying tea with Gary V this morning. Just always enjoying the show with everybody. Uh, real quick, Dustin on the back end, pop in and say hello. They always love you. Dustin, can you uh, can you get the name of our Facebook group? I think everybody on Tea with Gary V should join that on Facebook. Like, so can you talk to the team? I mean, is that the first in line group? Like, is that closed bait? Like, can you talk to the team on the back end? And first in line is closed. I know that. Okay. Is there another Facebook group? I'm like, oh, um, I mean, you, there's the Gary page and there's the Gary V video experience, but it's mo mainly just. There's, I don't have an I don't have an open group. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm a little confused. Can you hit up the team? Let's keep okay. moving. Yep. Gary, what's going on, brother? What's up, Jimmy? Not much, man. Um, just super grateful for everything that you do. So I, my question basically is that. I play and coach baseball. So the the back end of that is I played all through college, my whole life, everything. Um, had a really successful college career, was all American, all conference, the whole nine. But and then I figured I might as well do what I should do, right? Um, and I went and worked a corporate job, fucking crushed it, but was massively unfulfilled. So I said, fuck that. Uh, sold my car, took a one-way flight to Southeast Asia and just traveled for a while. Um, then I came back and was like, I, I missed the game, started coaching, um, started training, and within a matter of months, uh, signed a professional contract to go to France. Good for you. Uh, and then with all that, um, basically, coronavirus happened. My flight was supposed to be two weeks ago. Um, so now I'm just kind of trying to figure it out. But in the meantime, during COVID, I've built a pretty decent but really targeted audience around baseball, over 22,000 followers on TikTok. Um, all, all thanks to you, because you've been screaming at the fucking top of the mountaintops. Like fucking yelling. Uh, yeah, you've been yelling, bro. So anything else that you say, anything you're fucking <laughs> yelling, I'm going to do it. All in challenge, bot. Fucking Thank you. multiple. Thank but you uh, my question is... is Which, which raffles did you buy into? Um, I bought into yours, and I bought into Michael Rubens. I mean, Rubens those are both nice. just like ridiculous value. You're fucking kidding what, me, bro? Bro, you might want to buy at least one ticket for 10 bucks on the Cuban one. You could literally be in an NBA game. Gnarly. Yeah, my uh, I, I just got tenacious defense, though. The jumper is not <laughs> there. It's not so there. Like, they're just going to let you in at the last minute of the game and everyone's yeah. going to hug you and they're going to exactly. you back out. So. I love that. But my question is, is – now that I've kind of built this targeted audience, I'm struggling with what do I do next? Is it too late to get in the podcast game? Um, YouTube, Twitch, like I, I, yes, I'm on TikTok. Yes, I'm yes. on TikTok live right now. Yeah, and everybody. I've been playing MLB the show and they're like, hey, you need to make Twitch. So I've done that in the last week and built that over 100 followers, got subs going and stuff on that. Um, I've just been listening to the audience. All in. All in. So Jimmy, all of it. 
Yes. The answer is yes, right? The answer is yes. The answer is you're a young man. There's oh, It's always the right time to jump in. You didn't miss YouTube. You didn't miss TikTok. I've been yelling about TikTok for four years, musically, then TikTok. Like, you didn't miss Instagram. It gets harder to get big bases. TikTok's the only place you can go to 22K like that. Only yeah, place. Absolutely. Um, but but the reality is going nice and slow on Twitch a hundred at a time or on YouTube a hundred at a time is good too. Because don't forget, it's not how many subscribers you have, it's the right subscriber. Absolutely. Like one executive at the MLB network sees you, and the next thing you know, you're signing an eight hundred thousand dollar contract to be on TV. Or or a, high, or or a high net worth father who's who thinks his three boys are the next coming of the Alus, you know, and uh, yeah. they're, they're you know like it's not how many subscribers you have, it's which subscribers you have. Yeah, you true have. fans. Absolutely. Not only true fans, the one person that can change your life by reaching out. Yeah, you're a good looking Absolutely. dude. Somebody might just reach out to you and be like, "I want you on TV." Appreciate that. You're welcome, um, but <laughs> and if you have time for for one more question, real fast. Um, I understand that it definitely is the long game, but how would you recommend about going about potentially getting brand deals on TikTok, Slowly. especially with baseball Slowly. being Slowly. being a, a super traditional? Not, Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I get it. You probably have a need for money and different things of that nature, but I promise you. You have, you have to. I'd rather you sell that Kobe and Jordan thing on fucking eBay right now. Like, Fuck you that. have to. Respect, respect. <laughs> but listen to me. Sell those fucking candles. Like, I don't give a, sell your hoodie. Do not go for brand deals. Keep building to the audience so they have more leverage. People go in for the brand deal too early. It fucks yeah. them up. It changes the relationship. Their energy goes to brand deals instead of making great content and they get fucking killed. Gotcha. Hey, thank you so much. Like I said, super grateful. Gotcha, um, for everything that you do. Take care. Take care of yourself. All right, let's keep this going. You knew I was going to mention that Jordan thing, Ryan. I know you knew. Benjamin, what's good? Your your audio is not fixed. Somebody just wrote TikTok is a young audience email recipient. It's young. It's gotten ridiculously older in the last three months, and it will continue to get older, just like every platform. Facebook was only college kids, to remind you. Now it's only grandmas. Talk to me, Benjamin. Mm, still audio. Ben, try reloading the page and then coming back in. Fish and line group is closed. TikTok looks so much older now. It is. <laughs> it already is. TikTok has grown faster than Insta. Chris B, what's good? Anthony Davis. What's good? Stephen Richards. What's good? Martin Joe. Gabriela Costa. Let's go to the next one. Dustin, if we can't. Oh, now we got Benjamin. Benjamin? Hey, Gary. Sorry about that. No worries, brother. Hey, man. So uh, I'm, I feel really late to the game as far as all this uh, social media stuff goes. You know, Early. Uh, early, early in the game, Benjamin. Really? I mean yeah. it, bro. Uh, mm. I mean it. I, I'm sorry to cut right in. Like, no, you're I, just, I appreciate you're just, that. You're just not. Mm, okay. Like, like, cause it's not, I don't know what else to mm. fucking say, you know, like Charlie D'Amelio, you know, you know, explodes in, since August and is like one of the most famous people in the world kind of in the U S right now. And she started her TikTok account in like fucking July. Like, that's good know, to hear. <laughs> I mean, you could start a LinkedIn account, right? What do you do? I'm a trumpet player. I'm a professional musician. So bro, you have to get on TikTok yesterday. I, I need you to do me a favor. That's huge. Muse, I'm telling you right now, my, my my daughter and her friends think dentists are cool because they. I'm being dead serious. My daughter, who's ten, hit me up six months ago. She's like, Gary, Dad, Gary, Dad, you need to you need to be friends with this dentist on TikTok. Dentist. <laughs> so okay. So I think. Have you looked at TikTok yet? Yeah, I've I've like browsed it for like 10, 15 minutes before. Okay, Benjamin, we're gonna change your life right now. I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. Wow, I want man. you to spend five to 10 hours consuming TikTok. I need you to look at everything, everything. What that will do is get you into the mindset of what's working on there. You'll see things okay. you can do, you see things you can't do. I can't dance, I can't do the pop and top like fucking shit that you do. <laughs> so I don't dance, but I can do other things. I'm telling you right now, five to 10 hours, start your TikTok, make three TikToks a day, three. 
We're in quarantine. The fucking like do other things, jump on trends, use other music. You are going to be blown away. You watch the last person doing baseball mm-hmm. shit. I'm mm-hmm. telling you. I'm telling you. TikTok. I'm telling you. And is it the type of thing where I really just do what matters to me, or is yes. it kind of trying to follow the trend? A little bit of both. Both. Obviously. Yes, comma. If you see something that feels natural, right? So I'll show you my latest TikTok. Very natural to me. Ready? Here we go. Ready? Let me start it over because everybody needs to see it. Yeah, no, no booty shaking. I see that. No booty <laughs> shaking, right? And... You know, 600,000 views later, because it's on trend to a Meg Thee Stallion song that we could post edit with what I have. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, you will completely, com- you, I, I think a trumpet player is like in the perfect pocket to, wow. and not a 15 year old trumpet player. You, you, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, you, it will work. And how, does, is TikTok something that monetizes over time? Because I don't really understand. I see of how course it monetizes over time. Ads. Yeah, but yeah. you know what else monetizes over time? When a fucking dad fucking DMs you on TikTok and says, I need to have you for my bar mitzvah because every fucking 13 year old in the world wants you and now you're making $40,000 like a fucking rapper at a bar mitzvah. <laughs> it's deep, I like that. It's smart. Yeah, I, and I mean, for me, it's really not about the money, but I, I need freedom and comfort. You I know? respect the shit out of it, bro. I just I love I love m- making music and playing. So Bro, I'm you're gonna to make you're gonna make ten thousand dollars of our mitzvah. We're gonna literally clip. You're gonna literally in eighteen months if you listen to me and go completely all high am. You're gonna literally make a video that's gonna go viral that I make ten thousand dollars now at a bar mitzvah, and I'm gonna take this video clip in eighteen months on whatever the TikTok or Instagram is and do my split screen recall where I fucking <laughs> gave you the blueprint and changed your fucking life. I'm a hundred percent positive. Man, thank you. Ten thank hours you. of consumption today. Hang up all day. I don't want to fucking hear from you until. Read it all, read it all, watch it all. Get the trends out, learn it cold, learn it cold, and then make mm. a fucking trumpet TikTok tonight. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I promise will. you. And it, I mean, it, is it important to integrate with other platforms? I mean, I, I, I've, I've done nothing. I've no YouTube, I, TikTok. Yeah, just take folks Start on that, there. okay. It's the place where I think you will explode. It's also mm-hmm. the place where I think you'll monetize. I genuinely think you're fucking playing bar mitzvahs. <laughs> I've played a couple bar mitzvahs, but not for ten grand. How much so. do you get paid? I mean, usually about three to four hundred dollars for a for a good gig. That's normal. Ten k. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Get a million followers on TikTok and watch that first DM come through. I promise. And it's going to open up educational opportunities as well because I like to teach. So I mean, I want people to to contact me for for the TikTok. information I have. Yeah. Thank you. Ten Gary. hours in there. You're gonna first of all you're gonna enjoy it because it's still a fun, happy, silly place. So it's just gonna be nice. Mm-hmm. Better than the shit you see in the other platforms. And two, you're gonna make something. You're gonna fucking make something. And it's gonna fucking suck. Or you're a natural, it's gonna rock. I don't know, but you gotta fucking start going. But it doesn't have to be all um really um geared towards my musical pursuits, right? I can do eclectic stuff as well. Like, you can, you should do, do you everything. Better? No, no, mix it all. But I do think you could be the trumpet guy of TikTok. I do. Okay. That's if deep. you fucking play the trumpet of the songs that are trending on TikTok, you will win. Mm-hmm. You show a little personality, yeah. you do a little stuff. Like, you will win, bro. I appreciate this, Gary. Thank you. Good luck. Ryan, I'm telling you right now, if I was born in this country, I would be running for president. I would fucking win. Just so there's no. Comp- yes, Dustin. I just wanted to say that that was really smart. The whole play the trending songs, like. I see that all the time. It's gonna and, fucking work. Yeah. And the, and the monetization, like people can make pennies on YouTube, but if they're smart and their business, like I just told him, win every 13 year old's heart, you'll be doing bar mitzvahs and sweet 16s to your fucking, you'll be making a million a year if right. you're the trumpet guy of TikTok. Yeah, like I remember when you said on Joe Rogan, like how come, like Joe Rogan was like saying, I'm not I'm not making money off Instagram, but then you're saying, no, you're making money off doing your stand up and all this. Like it's the other things that people aren't thinking about. People want to be literal with transact. People yeah. are transactional. I'm brand. Yeah. Everyone out here thinks they're a marketer. They're a fucking salesperson. I'm a marketer. Get out of here. Let's keep it going.
Hi, Gary. How are you, my friend? How do you pronounce your name? Uh, it's Joey. It, was, it is Joey. Uh, I thought so. Hey. I like the way it's spelled. Yeah. Love that. How are you, thank Joey? You. <laughs> uh, good. First of all, I want to thank you for being you and everything you do. And uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about my past. It's like I studied accounting and finance and growing up, I didn't have a dream or I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. Basically, I was struggle finding a purpose for myself. So I just uh, I wanted to be a, become an actor after finishing up accounting and finance. And uh, so my question is, how do I pursue my dream to be an actor? And uh, like without having uh, anyone like to back me up. And also, uh, how do I set my priorities? For example, like I have debts for OSAP um, from studying, right? Like coming out of uh, school, I'm at a, a point where like, I can't afford to take uh, courses to uh, help me grow. Uh, well, you're definitely acting not. Wise. We're but not at the same we're time, not, since not, I started. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Keep going. No, I was going to say, since I started thinking about acting, it, it's like the law of attraction. It's like what you think comes your way. And it's been happening. Like I've been meeting the right people with the right uh, connections and so on. But it's just like uh, the uh, reality keeps pulling you through. It's like uh, I came to the realization, like I need money. I of need to need be you able to sustain myself yep, first yep. to be able. Yep. Where do you live? So I've been, I've been excuse me. Where do you live? Uh, I live in Toronto. Canada. Um, and you're a Canadian citizen? No. Well, well, yeah, I am. No, yeah. I've been here for 11 years. Um, so, look, I think the, the trickiest one is deploying the patience and the balance of paying for your li life and your debt off while chasing a dream. And the reality is, by making the decisions you made to collect debt for something you didn't love, that was... In essence, unfortunately, and this is for a lot of people, ended ended up being a quote unquote potentially wrong decision, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. What happens when that happens though is it has to take longer, right? It has to take longer. Yeah. So so the reality is is back to your law. Of, it's not the law of attraction. It's not like the cosmos all of a sudden, you know, decided to put it down on you, it's that you're putting yourself in a position for those things to happen because you're thinking about it more, right? And so the reality is what happens now when you've made a decision that is a one step backwards, now every minute has to be audited. You know, every minute has to be audited, meaning you need to put yourself in a place where you're looking at every minute you're spending on the weekends and nights and deploying that against behavior that lets you get to your dream. I understand. So, um, also, I wanted to ask in terms of uh, recommendation, like for being out there. Should I get into TikTok and Instagram as well? What do you think I'm gonna say? Well, you're gonna say yes, but I mean, like, <laughs> I so mean, in, in terms of, of course, of, like yeah. people get discovered. Some of you know, mo some of the like all the kids that were on Vine early and exploded are acting in movies. It already happened, Joey. It already happened. It was called Vine. But for me, but the thing is, for me, like I'm uh, more interested in like, like I, I think I figured out my purpose, and I know what I want to do with my life. Like acting is like my dream, but what I want to do also is like, I want to do it for a purpose, which is to um, move people, move people's hearts, like change so, their emotions. So, so make fucking content. I'm changing people's emotions and hearts right now. It's free. Just do it. Stop talking about it. Start doing it. You got it. But like, what kind of content? I don't know. That's if the you, question. If you don't know how to fucking change and move people's hearts, then you're not going to change people's minds and hearts. Like, what kind of whatever the fuck you want. Like, whatever you want to talk about. Like, changing people's minds and hearts comes with ideas and the ability to articulate them. You can do that in the written word. Hemingway fucking did it in the written word, right? Like you can do it in a million different ways. Audio, video, you know, written. The ways to the ways to you know communicate have been well established. 
This is more getting out of doubt and getting into clarity and fucking executing. I understand. You know what I mean? Um, like, like you just have to do. You have to make. There is no perfect. Okay. This is this is about insecurity. I understand. For the uh, so you'd recommend someone to pay off their debts first and pursue their dream, or do both at the same time? Same time, parallel. No. It doesn't cost you. Don't take. Okay. Don't do what you did that put you in trouble. When I heard you say acting school or 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 lessons, people want to pay to be taught, which actually means they don't want to do. You don't need acting fucking lessons. Fucking just act on TikTok. Make skits. <laughs> don't pay somebody to make yourself feel like you're doing it. Do it. I appreciate it, brother. Dustin, let me wrap this up. Thanks, Joey. Listen, to everybody, do you know how many people fucking pay for courses to make themselves believe they're doing it when they're not doing it? Just do. Fucking make. Fuck. Great show, all in challenge, please support it. We're gonna end this with my auction. And then of course, I didn't put in the plug yet. If you haven't done this yet, just fuck you. If you haven't signed up for fucking wine tax, honestly, if you buy fucking wine and you haven't signed up for wine tax, I'm not even like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it less confusing. Yo, fuck you. Like, what are we doing out here? Like, why in the world would you buy wine from somebody besides my dad? On some real shit. Especially when it's the best fucking service in the world. On some real shit. Fuck. I'm just kidding, but I'm not. Love you guys. Jewel, thanks for starting <laughs> off the show. Dustin, <laughs> you like that? <laughs> what? It was good, right? Fuck you. Like, you fuck you. Like, fuck I, don't, you. I don't get it. Like, like I, you know, obviously I get it if you're an international. I get if you're in Illinois or Texas or Utah and Michigan, you can't, sh- you can't buy from wine text because you can't ship to every state. But if you're in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and you buy wine, if you're in Florida and Virginia and California, like, like come on. Like, come on. Like, why would you buy wine anywhere else, Dustin? You get educated, you get your palate expanded. Today we have a fucking wine that's $22. That's 11, under 11 bucks. $10 and change. It's the best fucking white, like crazy white wine. I, I don't get it. I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm mad. Like, Donna Doherty better sign up. I'm mad. Like, this $11, $10.70 something cents wine we're going to sell today is better than every $20 Sauvignon Blanc or Sancerre or fucking Riesling that people buy. And like, they're gonna go to fucking Publix or have the local liquor store deliver. Like, it makes no fucking sense to me. Dustin, your parents drink wine? No, I brought them empathy. Like, they had some of it and, but like, they don't drink wine that much. <laughs> I respect that, I respect that. Yeah, if you don't drink wine, it's good. But like, Dana, we shipped to Arizona, please go. Please go to winetext.com right now when we hang up. Please, it would mean a lot to me. Please sign up. But come on. All right, and all in challenge. Please donate to it. Here is what I'm offering. Go buy a $10 raffle ticket and I can spend an entire year with you doing all of this crazy shit. I am giving away the ultimate Gary Vee experience. How should that go? Okay. Over the last week or so, I've been uh, jamming with my friend Michael Rubin and helping out on this All In Challenge that I am accepting right now. But allinchallenge.com, please go there. We are challenging some of the greatest artists, entertainers, athletes in the world to provide a ridiculous all-time experience or one of their most iconic items in their collection to help raise money to help feed the hungry during this ridiculous time. And so now I have to put up my auction. So my auction, the ultimate Gary Vee experience. Here we go, I'm gonna go off the top of the head. And you can go on allinchallenge.com to go bid on this. I am giving away, okay. You get to, in the course of a year, you will go garage sailing with me and film uh, Trash Talk. Also, you can get a workout with me and Mike Vacanti. So I know a lot of you pay attention to that part of my world. Also, we're gonna go to Wine Library and do a $25,000 uh, shopping spree. That's right, I'm gonna pay my dad. <laughs> well, I'm gonna donate, we're gonna pay my dad 25000 So $25,000 shopping spree at Wine Library. I will walk through the whole store with you, tell you the war stories, and you'll buy a bunch of uh, wine, beer, liquor, whatever you want, food. We are going to go to a Jets game together. 
You're gonna tailgate with me. I never do this. When I give away Jets tickets, I never let the person sit with me. So you will sit with me during the Jets game. I won't talk to you during the game. I'm completely focused, but you'll get that. So the ultimate Jets experience, tailgate, full game with me as well. Also, I'm going to give you one week play at Vayner Media. So this is for you and a plus one, by the way. So the two tickets, the for, we'll do some plus ones, we'll do some just me and you, depending on what it is. One full week at VaynerMedia, getting consulting and business advice from Team Gary B and me for the entire week, hanging out in the pit where the show's done. Uh, you're gonna be a guest of my podcast. We're going to do a wine dinner for you and seven of your friends uh, at Hunt and Fish Club uh, in New York City. And I'm gonna fly you, uh, all paid, plus one, to three of my keynotes and we'll work on those details. The ultimate Gary V experience. I hope you bid on it. I hope you get involved. I hope we raise a lot of money to help people that need it. Also, what's so fun about the All In Challenge is you get to challenge people to be in it. I am gonna challenge all the Vayner Sports athletes. I expect you in there, so that is number one. Number two, I'm gonna go with, ooh, you know what? Timbaland, the super producer who's completely lighting up uh, Instagram. Timbaland, the super producer, I'm calling you out. And finally, I got one. The Undertaker, one of the great wrestlers of all time. Please join the challenge. Everybody go to allinchallenge.com. Please support this. The experiences are gonna be nuts. We've been working, bleeding out of the eyeballs for the last week, putting this all together. You're gonna be blown away what you're about to see on social media. Hashtag All In Challenge. Please check it out and please go to your favorite celebrities, athletes, and entertainers and leave hashtag All In Challenge to get them involved. The All In Challenge, please. Take it.